The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. If you want to maintain social distance, you go to this side of the church. <laughs> no one's ever sat there way before it was popular. <laughs> we were a forerunner. But I'm going to fool you. I'm going to preach to this side today and kind of ignore those people over there, right? But you're all going to catch the fire. Father, we just thank you. And the word of the Lord that God gave me was, Terry, seven days, and I'll show you what I want you to do. So I want you to, we're going to pray and make sure that you've got your assignment. And that you don't dismiss it. And that you basically say, God, whatsoever you speak to me, it is God who is at work in me to both will and to perform it. All I need is consent, yielding, and obey. There's, a, there's an anointing going on Stephen right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, just release that anointing to him. Cause it to increase and abound. There it is. There it is. <laughs> that little joy bubble is, uh, is your calling to ministry. God's going to be able to do a work in you in the days ahead. And God's saying that you're, this is the gifts and the callings. And by the laying on of hands, there will be an impartation in the days ahead for, for uh, what we would call a trans pneuma migration, a transference of spirit. There's going to be an anointing that's come from this place that for such a time as this is going to be reproduced in your life. You're going to move in discernment and discerning of spirits. God's going to pull out a, a, a religious yoke on you and bring you into a freedom that you've never known possible. And God's going to say, you're going to, be, you're going to be like a child in a candy store. I'm going to cause you to just move in the high places of God. And God's saying, for this congregation, you have not yet begun to burn, but there I have kindled a fire this day. And you're going to see a, a radical increase. And, and Glenn, it's even on you right now that that anointing is on you. And, and he's saying that uh, you are burning from the inside out, and there's a heat that's coming into your physical body. God is saying this is the beginning. Of, this is the beginning because it's going to go from the ankles to the knees to the waist to where you're going to have to swim. For whosoever will see why, oh, no takers, write that down because you're going to forget later. You're going to say, what did he say? Consent, yield, and obey. You consent that God is going to do a new chapter in your life and God is going to give you an assignment, but then you need to yield to it and obedience. And obedience is going to build the kind of authority that God's bringing forth in the days ahead. There's a new authority in each and every one of your lives, and it's, and it's proportional to your gifts and your callings. So pay attention to your assignment, because where your assignment is, there's going to be the increase in the anointing. God's not going to anoint you to do something that He's not called you to do. He's going to anoint you to do something He's called you to do. So you're going to see an increase. Baby steps of obedience will build that kind of authority that God's releasing even on this day, on this Pentecost Sunday. We're thanking you, God, that we are open and receptive. I want to, uh, the, the word that the Lord gave me too for this morning was a distance is a deception. Distance is a deception. We used, to, we used to go to church to church, and we would quote scripture, and we'd say, uh, Jesus, the Messiah in you, the hope of glory. Point to Jesus. And out of congregations of a thousand people, they would go like this. Jesus, the Messiah, in you. Point to Jesus. And they still did this. That's a deception. Yes, he's in heaven. But when you say Jesus in you, where are we talking about? <coughs> Come on, right? So is that not a deception? Then we cleanse you of that right now. If you're watching by Ustream or YouTube, uh, Facebook, whatever, whatever the platform is that you're watching by, I want to tell you something. There's an anointing right there for you. God places the individual in families, and there are people who are alone that are connected to us, and they know it by the Spirit, that they are like sons and daughters, and, they, and, and there's, a, there's a clear, uh, clear knitting to where they have their own no-so. Well, if you've got that no-so, you're also a recipient to receive right now. Uh, the assignment that God's given. There's worship leaders that are going to come to this church. They're going to relocate from other areas because God's going to say, because I knit with you. I don't want to hire somebody. I want people that are knit. I want to say people that say, hey, I've got your DNA. And they're going to come and they're going to say, this sounds crazy, but God told me to basically move here. 
Have you ever heard of anything like that? I came here by that. I'm not preaching something I haven't done myself. God sent me to Charlotte without knowing a single thing and without a job, without a future, without anything other than the city in which you've been taken captive. Pray for its peace, for in it will be your peace. And you know what? That intercession, 23 years ago, led me to go intercede. And when I interceded, I went to a place where they were interceding, and that's where I met Jennifer. I was so glad that I was obedient. The city in which you've been taken captive, pray for its peace, for in it will be your peace. There's people right now that are thinking about relocating and coming to this area, and, and they're saying, I think I'm crazy, but I think I'm hearing that. Well, you're not crazy. You're probably hearing that. And God's going to develop, he's going to develop the areas of ministry that's going to be, uh, 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 how can I say, brought to maturity, that the inklings have been there, but this is a season of mentoring. This is a season of discipling. This is also a season of ingathering. And I think uh, God's basically saying we're even going to have one of, the, one of the small groups that's going to be outreach because there's going to be young people that are going to be inquiring and they're going to be just like I was when I was searching. I didn't know what I was searching for, but everything I tried didn't work until I came face to face with Jesus. And I said, this is the way we were meant to live. So, Father, right now I want to break any deception of distance. And here's the thing the Lord's given me all week long. Uh, actually, it's been two weeks. Two weeks. He's saying there's people out there <clears throat> who want to quit, drop out, and it's in the atmosphere. And they think that it's their own idea. It is not your own idea. It's coming from the pit of hell. Drop out, quit. Separation avoids accountability, the very thing that God is putting together as a team, as a, as, a, as a organism. Accountability and iron sharpening iron. All of you need friends. All of you do not withdraw from your friends and make it some kind of special holy venture. No, 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 no. That's they that isolate themselves seek what they want. Hmm? I've been in pastoring long enough to know that when people make excuses, oh, I just got to get alone with God. Get alone with God, but you don't cut off your friends, you don't cut off your leadership, you don't cut off relationship. Because that's the enemy's tactic to isolate you. And you're just seeking what you want, not what God wants. So, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you, that, we're going to pray for a one accord heart and attitude. Jennifer, come on up here. I, wanna, I, wanna, uh, I want Jennifer to share our one accord experience. That's all. That's the only supernatural I'm going to share today. The rest is going to happen to you. For some reason, on both of our hearts, unity is something we've longed for. And when we got married, we discovered we can open to one another just the way we open to the presence of God. And there was a change in the atmosphere. It's now, happening right now while you're talking about it. And she's doing it while she's talking. It's not theoretical. That's what the Bible would call one accord in the upper room. It was a spiritual knitting of hearts it's a reality and when they were doing that in the upper room that one ago accord opened a portal for God to come God responds to Christian unity it's very powerful and and, and don't so don't be deceived if you're single God places the solitary in families so you are without excuse being single so we were in our prayer time one morning and we were opening our hearts to God but also to each other and it must have created a portal because Jesus manifested in the room and it was so powerful that I said this is one accord this is what was happening in the other room and then it's at, at, at the God, same time when two or, or three, three are, gathered. are gathered together that means like a symphony and like a symphony in agreement, there Jesus is in the midst. And this is what we're working toward, a habitation of God in the spirit. And it's going to come and manifest through our unity with one another. So this is really powerful. When we come in here and worship, I don't think you did it this morning, but often Dennis will encourage us to not just open to God, 
but open our hearts to one another to worship together as an assembly, as a congregation. And as soon as we do that, you can tell the anointing increases, that God is pleased with unity. As a matter of fact, one thing he hates, it's an abomination to him, are unity breakers, the accuser of the brethren in the body of believers. Okay. Amen. I want to pray that now. I want to pray. We did this with uh, internationally known pastors who were in the room, and they were all blown away because they said, we were doing a, a marriage seminar. And they said, we never saw a marriage seminar like this before in our lives. So we're going to do that today. If you're married, I want you to do something. I want you to horizontally. If your wife or husband's here, fine. If not, that's okay. You can do it right from your seat. Distance is a deception. There's no distance in the spirit realm. I want you to do this. I want you to think about them. That'll have them forgive her. Well, that's what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> think about them. And if there's any kind of a wall, any kind of a hesit walls are down here, by the way. You, you say, oh, I dealt with it up here. But down here, is, there's walls. If you have friends, bosses, authority figures, even pastors, <laughs> if there is a wall when you think about them, I want you to, from the heart, this is your heart, I release loving forgiveness. That's the only thing that removes the wall. It's the only thing that removes that which is coming between you and God. So, Father, right now, I can't be in one accord horizontally if I've got walls with people. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, from down here, I yield. I yield and I release forgiveness because you can't bond together. We did this in a marriage seminar, and we had them pray for one another, and they were weeping and laughing and knitting together when the walls are gone. The only legitimate wall in the kingdom of God is peace. And if you've got peace with God and peace with one another, then you're in, a, you're in a healthy place of reconciliation. Boyfriends, girlfriends, doesn't matter. If there's a relationship there, you need to remove any walls. And that doesn't mean you, you let everything fall out. It just means the walls of hostility, the walls of resistance, and the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind. The peace is a legitimate wall. It will guard you. But in that peace, there is a connection opportunity. And you connect with one another. And in that connection, God showed us, and Jennifer got the same vision that I got years ago. Uh, I had a vision of a dome with pillars and foundations. And God says, and just like the tribes of Israel camped around the tent in the wilderness, there's going to be little domes, little Pentecosts all over the world. The glory of God's going to flood individual twos and threes. You know, twos and threes. Hmm? You're going to have to start removing walls from the people that God puts in your life because there's a divine appointments that He's placed in your life, but you might not like their personality. And God said, that's to let you see what's in your heart. I want that removed from your heart. You don't like their personality. I put them in your life for a purpose, to let you see what's in you and get rid of that. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, prepare for a one accord. Um, now, you know when forgiveness is not from the head. Forgiveness from the head does not work. How do you know if you forgave from the heart? Peace. If you're forgiving and it doesn't change to peace, you're just giving mental assent. Now look at me. Here's the way you do it properly. And for the benefit of those watching by YouTube and, and Facebook, C-Y-O. That's for note takers who are going to figure it out. Consent. Consent isn't supernatural. Consent is merely saying, okay. <laughs> Consent, yield to the Jesus in you. Ah, that's different. When you yield and surrender, you're opening the door of your heart. And then you obey by forgiving. And obedience is coming from the grace of God. It's coming from the personal presence of God. Who's doing the forgiving anyway? You and Jesus. Only God can forgive sin, but He told you, you have to forgive. So what you are we talking about? The new creation you, not your carnal you, 
apart from him, that you can do nothing. But with him, oh, he is working from the heart. I'm releasing forgiveness to whosoever. Right now throughout this room, I am preparing myself for an outpouring of God's spirit. And it's going to call for a one accord heart attitude toward whosoever. So right now, husbands, wives, friends, authority figures, there's no barrier. And as a baby Christian, when I, I would pray and feel the presence of God, and it would start to get strong, and all of a sudden I would see my foreman in the factory, I'd see his face in my head, and down in my gut it went, Ugh. and the Lord said, that Ugh is coming between you and I. Don't let anything come between what you and I have together. The foreman was not the problem. The heart had the problem. The heart had an attitude toward the foreman that God said, until you deal with that, it's coming between what you and I have together. So don't be talking about intimacy with God if you're not willing to do that. You'll never have intimacy with God without cleansing the heart. So Father, right now, on the fire of the Holy Spirit. I want to see tongues of fire on each and every one of us. We are releasing forgiveness to whosoever. We're coming into a place of one accord to the best of our ability. We, have, we don't have walls against anybody. And so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we're going to be a God-welcoming people. We're opening up to you, and we're opening up to one another in this room. And we're just welcoming. We're a God-welcoming people. <laughs> and it's going to increase, increase, increase. Ah. Knit us together with the divine appointments that you put in our life. Those divine appointments are right now becoming divine connections. Divine connections release us into our divine assignment. It's a divine order, a divine assignment. Holy Spirit, start revealing to each and every person the assignment that you have for them. Because apart from you, th they can do nothing. So we're opening up to the empowerment and the authority to accomplish the purpose for which we were sent individually. And for the people that are watching, some will be frustrated. They're going, I, I, I have trouble receiving. When we ministered and traveled, here's the elements that we prayed for. So I want to pray for those watching by YouTube and Ustream. First of all, we found that most people didn't know where to receive. This is where you open the door of your heart. Open the door of your heart right now. And if you're watching by YouTube or Facebook, open... You open here. You yield here. That's right. <laughs> that means you're open. That's the way you got saved, believe it or not. You asked Jesus to come in your heart. Not the blood pumper. This. That's the door of the heart. And some people fail because they don't know how to receive. It's an openness and a drawing forth. You draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Now when I say draw nigh to God, don't go to heaven. Draw nigh to God is Christ in you. Now yield, and there you go, the anointing change in the room. Uh, yield to him. You draw nigh to him, he draws nigh to you. You know the story of the prodigal. He came walking back. But the Father ran toward him. You draw nigh to God, he runs toward you. You might be just walking back, but he's coming open, 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 open. Draw nigh to God, he draws nigh to you.
God is not hiding from you. He's hiding for you. And we're going to search for him with all of our heart in this service. We're going to search for him. Spirit to spirit, heart to heart, breath to breath. I'm believing for a great awakening to have commenced in our individual and corporate lives. A great awakening means that we're going to seek him and find him when we search for him with all our heart. There's some characteristics of being asleep when we talk about awakening. There's some characteristics of being asleep. First of all, when you're asleep, you don't know you're asleep. Awake, O oh sleeper. Personally, apply that to yourself. Don't, don't get proud now and religious. Awake, awake, O oh sleeper. Holy Spirit, awaken me. There's areas in me that need awakened to your presence and to your goodness. I didn't know I was asleep, but I'm going to wake up. When you're asleep, the sound of alarm is not pleasant, but some of us need a rude awakening, right? We need shocked into it. We've got a ways to go. Thank you, Lord. Increase. You do things when you're asleep that you wouldn't do if you were awake. Your flesh manifests. But the one who loves you wants to wake you up this morning. He's the one that wants to awaken you. The signs of life. Five signs of life. And I'm going to use five scriptures. And I want you to open your heart and say, awaken me just like that. First of all, dead men don't eat. But if God's going to raise us up with the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, Luke 8, 55 says, Then her spirit returned, and she arose immediately, and he commanded that she be given something to eat. Dead people don't eat. How are you feeding on the Word of God? Are you hungering after the things of God? Is there a yearning for the Word of God? Because if you don't hunger for the Word of God, you're asleep. You're dead. Asleep and dead, very similar. You're not enjoying the union. Second element, dead men can't see. Acts 9.40, Peter put them all out, knelt down and prayed, and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and she saw Peter. The eyes were open. God wants to give spiritual revelation, and your revelation will be directly proportional to your gifts and your callings. It'll be directly proportional to the size of your heart and the hunger. It'll be directly proportional to your influence with God. Do you want influence with God? Then Father said, give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Open my eyes. This is going to be a day where the scales are going to fall and I'm going to start seeing people and circumstances. I'm going to start seeing, and I'm praying this for Stephen too, for discernment. It's not judgment. Discernment means to know the source. Discernment was so powerful in me in the early years, I even hid it from pastors because I didn't hear anybody else talk about it. And I didn't want to be the young guy talking about something that they didn't know nothing about. <laughs> Discernment goes to the source. Hmm? How many of you learned life and death are in the power of the tongue? And I'll say, what's that mean? And they'll say, words. Not quite. That's a half-truth. It's the power behind the words. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. What power is behind those words? Is there any power behind those words? The devil can quote scripture. It's not just words. It's the power that's attached to the words. Discernment discerns the source of people and circumstances. And it can be awkward at times. But God is going to rekindle that in you as believers. You're going to be sensitive to discern, and it's, a lack, it's lacking even in the prophetic camp. It's lacking. Because you can say something right with a wrong motive. Motive, the source. God wants truth that flows from love. 
has to have both and holiness, without which we're not going to see the Lord. Dead men don't breathe. They don't inhale and exhale, do they, if they're dead? Well, because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. We need that breathing kind of prayer. We need to be able to receive in, breathe in, and breathe out the life of God, the Zoe, the God kind of life, don't we? Do we need awakened in that area too? Fourth area, dead men don't talk. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak. And they presented him to his mother. These are just scriptures that basically are saying after they are recent, had resurrection life in them, after they are resuscitated, they did certain things. They ate, they saw, they talked, all right? But it's all coming out of resurrection. It's all coming out of a resuscitated life. It's all coming out of an awakening. How many are looking forward to an awa being awakened? Uh -huh. It's not like in the world where they say they woke, <laughs> okay? They're still dead and they're still asleep for the most part. But <laughs> interesting terminology, isn't it? Um, and basically, dead men don't walk. Mark 5, 42, immediately the girl rose and walked. She was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. Am I walking in the assignment that God's given me? So, Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we are a people prepared for a great awakening, and beginning even this day, even this day, that, that tongues of fire, this burning bush, we drew close to see it. And he who began a good work is going to continue it. And we thank you for this right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing uh, uh, that, uh, Donna, there's going to be a, 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 a true release. Now, I already know some stuff in the natural, but apart from that, there's going to be a true release of some of the dormant things that have been in there. They've been cooking away and cooking away, but God says, know it that it's my timing and my timing is never too soon and it's never too late so fear not daughter be encouraged know that that in that time and in that season i've also polished you like a silver and so in that time of redemption and time of seasoning i've caused you to have a flavor and a taste that is pleasing in my sight know this that there are some that have suffered right now what they would call tragedies and chaos and God says that I will be with you in the fire. I did not say I would remove all circumstances that were negative, but I'm going to be with you. And the word of the Lord in the most difficult of all situations, in the most horrific of, uh, uh, of crises in your personal life, God said, this should be sufficient. I am with you. If it was good enough for the greats in history, it's good enough for you. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. If you would just draw in the difficult time, draw close to that I am with you, that I am not alone. Because the enemy's working overtime on trying to make you feel alone. And God, on this Pentecost Sunday, wants you to come together in one accord. So whose report are you going to listen to? Huh? Do you want to isolate yourself? Do you want to do it your way? Do you want to make decisions? and not consult your friends or family or, or leadership. You want to make decisions, then after the fact, get their opinion. I know that trick. I've been in ministry too long. You did what you wanted to do, and then ask an opinion after you did it. <laughs> I know that trick. What that means is you wanted to do what you wanted to do. You didn't really want another opinion. You didn't really want iron to sharpen iron. You didn't really want to grow and be pleasing to God in his will. So, Father, we just thank you right now that you're about to awaken us. And uh, Jeremiah, I am with you, Jeremiah. Don't be afraid of their faces. I am with you. There's going to be a holy boldness that's coming forth from the church in the days ahead, starting today. You're going to be required to be bold. You might even surprise yourself by the anointing of God coming upon you, and you get bold. You're going to start witnessing when you say, oh, boy, that's not me. I don't do that. Oh, really? You just might find yourself, you're turning over a whole new chapter in your life. Uh, where have I heard that before? You're going to turn over a new chapter, and you're going to have boldness. You're going to start saying, remember what the apostles did on the day of Pentecost? Shortly after, 
They said, do not talk about that Jesus anymore. They said, Lord, behold their threatenings. Help me to be even more bold. <laughs> That's a godly attitude. That's not rebellion. That's a, I've got a fire burning on the inside of me, and if I, God forbid, if I don't get it out. Huh? In order to be the bush that's not consumed, you've got to release it. <laughs> you've got to give it away. And God's basically saying, Jeremiah, what have you seen? Oh, I see, oh, actually, it was called an almond tree, but it was a waking tree. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see a waking tree. Mm, you have seen well, Jeremiah, but I'm about to awaken my word to perform it. And when God's awakening his word, that means he's going to incite it to action. He's going to stir it up. He's going to cause it for you to see. Here's some examples in the scripture where uh, Deuteronomy 32, as an eagle stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. Basically, an eagle that hovers over its nest, what's it doing to the young ones? The same thing we're doing here today. We're just basically saying, Holy Spirit is hovering over your assignment, your destiny the plans and the purposes that God has for you. But he's, what he's doing is he's incubating over you your assignment until you realize, ah, oh, this is what I was called to do. Oh, this is what God wants me to do. What's he stirring up? He's stirring up your sense of destiny. And in some cases, I think that mother eagle needs to kick some of those eagles out and show them that they can fly and quit just living in retirement mentality when they're 30. All right, that's not an age to retire. <laughs> Look at the greats. They didn't retire. Matter of fact, God had to tell Moses, go up and die. <laughs> he had to tell him to die. That should be your attitude. That eagle is stirring up your assignment and your destiny. Psalm 108, verse 2. Awake. Loop and lute, <laughs> loop, lute and harp, I will awaken them. It's like right now, today, he's warming some of you instruments up. You know, like right before you play in a concert, you'll kind of do a warm up. Well, this is a warm up for the rest of your life, your life symphony. Symphony has to do with coming together in agreement. To agreement actually comes from the Greek word symphony. We're going to make a beautiful sound together, not just individually, but our individual instruments are going to come together and make a sound. And right now, we need, we need the Holy Spirit to hover over us to awaken you, your instruments. Some of you haven't had your instruments out of the case for a long time. It's time to open them up, get them out, and let the Holy Spirit incubate on it. For this is Pentecost Sunday. This is a time when God wants to strike a note. Hmm? You're his instrument. Say that out loud. I'm God's instrument. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't feel the boldness in it yet, but I believe you. <laughs> I will, I'll take it by faith that you're God's instrument. That's the next one. Awake, awake, and put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Isaiah 51.9. What that awake of the arm of the Lord is, be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. I'm expecting you to actually act on these things, not just go, oh, that was good. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I can feel that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you got to do more than that. You need to act accordingly. Faith has the corresponding action, or it's dead, right? So awake, awake. Awake, awake. Put on strength, the strength of the Lord, into action. And then the one that God discipled me when I was having my temper tantrum as a baby Christian, I wanted to go to Bible school, and God said, I'm going to send you to the school of the Spirit. And you know, the first thing he did was awaken to my spirit, Isaiah 50. Morning by morning, I'm going to awaken your ear to hear. Some of you need to have your, the, the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the desire to do what God is calling us to do from this forward on. It's a new chapter. And uh, I don't know what it means to you, but I have, I know that I know that I know that I know God is starting a new supernatural chapter in our lives. 
I've been had the supernatural my whole life, even held back from the supernatural because my peer pastors weren't having much supernatural, so I just kind of kept quiet. I'm not keeping quiet no more. I'll be like Glenn, right? If you see this pulpit burst in the flame, tell somebody. What have you got to lose? Are you looking at your reputation? Gee, Jesus made himself of no reputation. Let's have that mind that was in Jesus. Let's try that for a while. Let's have that mind that was in him that he didn't really care about what he looked like or what he sounded like. He just obeyed. Huh? And how did he obey? Have this mind that was in Jesus. He obeyed to the point of death, even the death on the cross, the just for the unjust. He was loyal to the point of death. Personal freedom. He became a servant, a bond slave, a voluntary servant. Nobody made him do that. He chose to do that. I did not come to be served, but to serve and give my life a ransom for many. Are you giving your life a ransom to any? Any. <laughs> Yet alone many. Father, right now, we're going to have a radical group in here. And the one thing that Kingdom Life is going to do, ooh, there was an anointing. On, I'm going to say that again. We got a radical group in here. You feel that? The anointing increased when I said, we have a radical group. Oh, my goodness now. Oh, I feel like George Patton or something. I don't know. Whoa, I've got an army, a supernatural army that is not going to hold their peace, but they're going to speak peace, and they're going to decree it and declare it in the days ahead. How many have sickness in their body? Anybody? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I want you to stand up right where you're at. We're going to release, we're going to release healing to you, and we're going to do it corporately. I want everyone in here. The Jesus, the healer, lives in you. I want you to release that anointing for physical healing to flow in the name of Jesus. This Pentecost Sunday is going to be a wonderful opportunity. I'm, I'm seeing he's healing kidneys for sure. So we're just going to take that and, and, and uh, uh, blood. There's healing for blood. <laughs> oh, he says, I'm giving some people some whole new organs. I want to say uh, whole new organs. Ah, I'll take that. Anybody want a new organ? I'll take it. I don't mean when you play. I'm talking about in your physical body, okay? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, now here's, here's the thing. When, when a word goes forth, I, I still go by the nature attached to it. And the nature attached to what I'm saying right now has joy attached to it. God doesn't put joy on something to make you feel good and lie. God is not a man that he would lie. So there's joy going forth on these healing words, so receive them. Open. Consent in your head, but yield and drink it in right now. I am, <laughs> I'm receiving healing. Physical. I think I'm getting my own healing here or something. Because I can't tell what it's me or when I'm picking up your spirit out there corporately. But there is joy. There is joy flowing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, it's like joy. It's like a, it's, there is a river that makes glad the city. It makes glad the people's. Thank you, Lord. Increase, increase, increase. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful, Jesus. Oh, oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Praise you, worship you. Oh. Oh, this, uh, <laughs> this body, <laughs> I'll need a new body because this one can't handle too much of the joy. Uh, it wants to explode. Thank you. Oh, here it comes. There's a corporate anointing, and it's resting on you. I see the dove descending and resting.
welcoming health and healing. Every cell in my physical body has gates and channels, and I'm saying, open up ye gates. Let the King of glory come on in. Let the healing virtue of Jesus the healer lives in me flow to every cell in my physical body. <laughs> I think there's been some, there's been a season of loss for a lot of people, whether it's jobs, loved ones, what have you. God is going to turn that mourning into joy. God is going to give you beauty for ashes. So, Father, right now, though we've, though we've seen the darkness, God is saying um, the darkness is passing away and the light's beginning to shine even brighter. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take from those things that caused pain and I'm going to restore unto you the joy of your salvation. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you. And what the enemy has robbed, he's going to restore. So we thank you in Jesus' name. I want to pray for finances right now for those that have lost jobs. I want you to slip up your hand if, if uh, you lost your job during this recent thing. Okay. One just one person. Most of you were fortunate enough to work out of the house. Let's pray for that lady right there. Father, in the name of Jesus, that God who began a good work is going to continue it. And he says, David said, I once was young and now I am old and I've never seen the righteous begging bread. So it won't be a question of begging. It'll be a question of provision and a restoring a sevenfold what God has for you. So God's saying that uh, fear not. I am with you, and if he is with you, provision is automatically going to be with you, and God will use any means imaginable to accomplish that purpose. You're a visitor, aren't you? Is this the first time here? Yes. Okay. What's your first name? Kimbra. Kimbra. Deborah? Kimbra. 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 Oh, that's good. Kimbra, I just hear the Lord saying that that this is for such a time as this that your assignment is being released today just like it is with other people. And he's saying that, that in this assignment that's going to cause you to, uh, that you're going to have uh, to make many choices. Let the peace of God rule because you're going to come to many forks in the road and, and it's going to look confusing, but God's not confused and he doesn't want you confused. What he's saying is let the peace of God guide and direct you to the left and to the right. And he will always let the peace of God rule. God is not a man. He will not lie and he will not put his peace on something. Now you need to distinguish between preference. Preference is not peace. Okay? That's the only place where deception comes in with guidance. People already have a predetermined decision they want to make and they say I have a peace about it. No, that's different. That's I want what I want and I want it now. <laughs> that's not peace. Peace, you're neutral. And so Father, we thank you for that in Jesus name. We're, and uh, I hear the Lord saying that, too, that, that this congregation as a whole is going to be blessed financially. So I receive that right now in Jesus' name. But the financial blessing is for you to fulfill the purposes of the kingdom. So make sure you see it's not for your pleasure, but for the advancement of his kingdom. And we thank you in advance for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anybody have a word? Besides Glenn, something that God's been speaking to that's got a lot of life on it. <laughs> Nothing like putting a little, it better have a lot of life or don't say it. Visitor? Uh huh.
How long ago was this? Two years ago. Two years. Come on up here. Uh, the people that are watching by Ustream don't know who we're talking about. But literally died, flatlined. This is my testimony, and I got inspired to write this with God's help. It's called Unhooked, and it's right after I got done reading Unbroken. And this is day one. It's John 15, 15, and about intimacy. And John 15, 15 is, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I call you friends for that I have learned from my father I've made known to you. And these are my words. And I thank you so much, Lord, for sharing your intimacy with me and my great Fuller family and helping us through our darkest of times and helping us find the truly blessed believers, helping heal us in our times of need when we truly deserve the help from the ones who truly believe, knowing we will help others who truly need, do what needs to be done with the amount of helpers needed to accomplish the true and amazing things leading to the blessings from the God above and the love of our dear Lord Jesus Christ He's done you. so much to help heal okay. those who truly I'm going to have you and Daniel pray for the cameras. I've got to get you over this way a little bit. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, Daniel has died and came back. Yes. He was dead and came back as he testified. I want you to pray for the people right there for resurrection life, for people to have the boldness and the courage to pray in impossible situations or what have you. Resurrection life shows in many forms. There are a lot of your areas that need that same power that raised Jesus from the dead would give life to your mortal body. Mortal means death doomed body. It's doomed to die. But resurrection life comes in and pleasantly surprises us yes. as it did with these two men. So would you two, Daniel, I'm going to ask Daniel to pray. Would you start? Father, I just come before you right now. And I thank whoops, you, whoops, whoops. That you did resurrect. Father, I just come before you right now thanking you, Lord, that you did resurrect me and you did not leave me dead, but you brought me back to life. And I know, God, that you can do it for others. God, for situations in their life, for diseases, for healing, for uh, conditions, for mental conditions, for physical conditions, for spiritual conditions. God, I speak resurrection life over each one, God, that you can just bring that up that you can bring life back to dead dreams, life back to dead situations in their life that they have given up on, Lord, but you can restore and you can bring life back, just like you did for me. And I thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Say a short prayer. Look at that little green light there. All right. That's people around the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for showing me your true love from the God above your father and releasing your Holy Spirit into my my inner being and truly showing me the power of God's words and helping me believe that I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Jesus Christ gives me and knowing that with the help of Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the true believers around me, we can accomplish the true and amazing things in our futures ahead of us. In Amen. Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, he who began a good work is going to continue it, isn't it? Well, I just feel like the waters are only at the ankle. We're going to... He hasn't had any for two years. Correct. No seizures for the last two years. And obviously no flatlining for two years. Okay, we're very pleased with that. So, Father, we just thank you that you began a good work. You're going to continue that good work. I want you to uh, really take to heart the things that were spoken here, the things you agreed to today, because God is basically has begun an awakening. And as he said, seven days, I'm starting a new chapter. So be open to that which is different than what you're accustomed to. And by the way, I have a word for you too. Uh, the days ahead, God's going to do a lot of emotional healing in you. Okay? That's been an area that's been neglected. But just like Jennifer, we have, we have our doctor in the back row there. The second brain the enteric nervous system, the left vagus nerve, the seat of the emotions goes up and informs your mind how you feel. But guess what? Nothing in the secular realm can take away your pain except Jesus. He's the only one that can take your pain and your sorrow. And so when you, when you literally let him take your pain and your sorrow emotionally, he replaces it with the fruit of the Spirit. That's why he gave you emotions. He didn't give you emotions to be problematic. He gave you emotions to enjoy love, joy, peace. He wanted you to feel love, joy, peace. <laughs> Not, I, I, got, I got the joy of the Lord by faith. All right, that doesn't work for me. I don't have the joy of the Lord by faith. Because then I look at them and I go, I don't want what you got. You keep it by faith. I want the real thing. I want experience. I want encounter. And God is taking us from a supernatural encounter to the subsequent relationship of progressive intimacy with him in the days ahead. Are you ready for that? Yeah. All right. All right. Let's stand and have a closing word of prayer together before we dismiss. Father, I am not going to treat lightly this new chapter. Yeah. Say that back to me. I'm not going to treat lightly this new chapter. But I'm going to be a supernatural expression a boldness. Whoa, there was boldness on that word, boldness. Very good. How many are going to just say, maybe you've been a little timid. Anybody been a little timid? Yeah, stop it. Okay, that'll cost you $5 a counseling fee. Stop it. Stop being timid. Seal this work by the power of the Holy Spirit and cause us to carry away that new chapter. And let's begin to to allow God by the Spirit to write on the tablet of our heart our future endeavors and our assignment and let them say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. You've been Amen. listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, Forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit Forgive123.com.